Get the Intel, the podcast meant for those of us trying to find out what the hell is going on in the field. Here, we discuss tools, techniques, and approaches that you can implement to streamline operations and let you focus on your craft. Hello, Chad Gill here. I am the host of the Get the Intel podcast, where I talk with leaders in contracting, management, and anyone else helping us do business better. This episode is brought to you by Laminin Coaching and Implementation. We help with strategy and implementation of your business. If you're a business in the construction-related industry, we can help. I have built several businesses and made every mistake in the book and can help you get to the next level a bit faster while avoiding the bumps in the road that I had to endure. We help with hiring assistants for roles like VAs and estimators. We can also help you set up a CRM to keep track of sales and project management tools to make sure projects get done on time and much more. We customize everything to the needs of your business. So learn more at laminincoach.com. Well, today we're flipping things around a little bit. Um, I get to be interviewed and I'm with uh, Chad Frazen here of Rise25, who has done hundreds of interviews with successful entrepreneurs, investors, and CEOs. Um, so today he will be interviewing me. Chad, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much, Chad. Great to be here. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. You know, coming out of building a house, you know, starting to get some of my life back. So that's always nice. Yeah, I'm sure that's that's uh, quite an adventure. Hey, uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about Lamin and Coach. You gave us a little bit of uh, of a background on it. Tell me more, like who who would be the ideal person to take advantage of your services? Take advantage yeah. of your services. So probably the you know most of our clients are business owners, entrepreneurs. Um, and they are, they're, they're, they're the people that, that they, they're kind of over, I call them over scheduled or they're at capacity, you know, they've achieved a level, um, in their company and, you know, they're, they're doing well, but the problem is they're at the threshold of where their business is their life. And now they're trying to find some balance between life and business. And also, you know, being able to distribute the load of running the business you know, so that it's not so decentralized, you know, not so centralized in one person, you know, it's locked into one head. So the primary problem that you help solve is basically focusing on the most important things and freeing everything else up. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about clawing back focus. Uh, we can't give people more time, you know, you, you, you know, time is set. There's, you know, there's a certain number of seconds in every day. We all have the same number of them. There's nothing we can do about that. But what we can do is change how we spend them. And so what we're trying to do is to help identify, okay, where are you burning these seconds, minutes, and hours? And are they the most productive for you? And particularly for owner operators, there's a, there's a, there's a real blend between business and life, you know, in general, and they're really hard to separate. So we kind of have to have a, holistic look at it. And that's kind of what's, you know, that that's where I, that's where I was. You know, I, I'm a business owner. I'm a dad. I'm a, you know, I'm a husband, you know, I'm all these things. I want to be good at all of them, but how do you separate them? Or do you even have to separate them in order to make them coexist? Would you say that most entrepreneurs just, whether it's intentional or accidentally kind of let their business endeavor basically become their life? I, without a doubt. I mean, you become a slave to the moment. You know, it's easy to say, okay, well, I was a startup and so I had to do this and that's what it takes. This is how I earn my way in. And that's true. Starting a business, there's no easy way to do it. Um, you know, except for the whole adage of if you want to own a small business, you know, buy a big one and wait. You know, that's probably the easiest way to do it. <laughs> but it's not, it's not the most profitable. But, you know, it's very difficult. And, and then you start to justify to yourself, you're like, this is what it takes. And then this is what it takes becomes, okay, but now I'm going to grow. And then what I see a lot of things happen to me and happen to my friends is, like, is there's a fear that sets in at the next stage where you're like, if I'm not working that hard, will I lose what I have because I'm not doing what it takes? And that's a... That's a terrible place to be stuck. So tell me a little bit without without getting into laminin quite yet. Tell me a little bit about your experience as an entrepreneur. 
um, you know, before you, before you realized either you needed coaching or you then wanted to become a coach? So, you know, we I started, um, my dad was like a workaholic type of guy. Um, great dad, great, great time and stuff like that. But he, he worked and believed in hard work that transferred over. I love my work. I enjoy doing it. And I would spend all, every waking moment doing it. Uh, but I, and then I knew that about my personality. So I honestly never wanted to own my own company because I thought I would fall victim to that. So then I ended up owning my own company and multiple companies at this point. And, um, and, and, but there came a inflection point about two years ago, which sort of COVID related, but not really COVID related, where I found myself in a hostage situation by my employees. And, 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 you know, my company was running me, my, I was working for my employees and they seemed to feel like I was. And, and that hit a point where I was like, okay, then enough is enough. And, um, and, you know, I was given an ultimatum by, you know, two key employees and, you know, I, I didn't start my own company because I'm a huge fan of being told what to do. So I went the other direction and found myself kind of alone and had to do something to supplement these and, and get more out of my time and still be able to have a life. And that spawned a lot of the skills that we now teach to our coaching clients to, to help them free, you know, so they can avoid the, you know, the briars and stuff that I walked through and they say, Hey, you know, don't, don't step there. You know, it's painful. And I did it and you don't have to. What did you do when you realized you were at that point? Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, you freaked out, you know, you get super scared, you know, I didn't waste any time sleeping. I was <laughs> so like, Oh my God, what am I going to do? And then you just pile forward. You, you figure out what you have to do. Was, I explained it to some people as saying, it was kind of like learning to swim by walking by the deep end. And then one of your friends just shoving you in and you're like, well, yeah, people do learn to swim that way. People also drown that way. So it's not really an ideal method of teaching. But that's kind of where I was. I know through that situation, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to to act. And then um, made a lot of mistakes. You know, you know, I have you know a few good ideas and a boatload of bad ones. Lots and lots of failures. And then I just wrote down the things that worked well, and um, and then wrote down the things that didn't work well. And, and then and, I, and I've, I've had business coaches throughout my career at different stages and different coaches. And then finally, my coach looked at me and was like, hey, you you should become a coach. And I thought, isn't that the blind leading the blind? And uh, her name was Addie uh, Adi Clement. And she was like, no, that's like the nearsighted leading the blind. You're just a little bit further ahead and that's enough. <laughs> like, <laughs> Perfect. So uh, so you, you, you kind of consulted a coach and now you are interested in becoming a and now you're Now you are a coach. Um, what, uh, what led you to start this company, Lamin and Coach? Just the, for me, when I implemented the, 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 like the things that we do now for other people, you know, whether we use remote personnel, we use assistance, we use automations and things like that. When I implemented that inside of my own company, the life that returned to me was so valuable and so much more enjoyable that I just, hated the idea of um of somebody else being stuck in the situation i was in and i've always worked harder for other people's goals than i do my own um and i don't know that that's a good thing it's just a trait um and so it kind of put those two things in one place i was like hey if, if i can bind your goals and put these skills to use in it then then this is a real confluence of, of great opportunity give me some examples of how your of how your life was not the way you'd like it before and how it is the way you like it now. Mostly. So, you know, I would, I would lay in bed at night, you know, what I would, I would, or I would wake up and I would think, Oh my gosh, if something happens to me personally, then, you know, my employees don't have direction. My family doesn't have, you know, my, 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 my family didn't know what all we had going on as far as, you know, we owned a building, we owned another building, we owned, you know, these things that we had. And so the inner workings of our finances, the, the, uh, and it's the same on the business side. You know, we had, I had employees that knew a little bit about their part, but nobody had the whole picture and there was no, nothing written down. So 
you know, you you just picture of, oh my God, and it sounds like super dramatic. It's like, oh, I'm bleeding out in the road. And then all these people that I've let down or abandoned. And um, and I was like, man, I've got to fix this. And then that worry just 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 sits on you. And um, and then that makes you a coward. You can't act on any ideas because you're you know, you're, you're scared that, you know, you're, you can't do any more or something like that, which is really just a negative, you know, experience all the way around. And also your company will suffer from it and your family suffers from it. So now, so now you're, I guess you don't have that problem. Not nearly as much. I mean, it's uh, I will say that I continue to grow and I continue to do things because what I did learn is that's part of my personality. That's where you know, I learned through pain avoidance and I learned through, um, you know, I, I operate at my best when I am mere capacity because that makes me act and do things. So I always kind of bounce along a little, you know, up against the, the line of more than I can handle because once I get to slightly more than I can handle, then I delegate and I, you know, put steps and processes in place and I get under capacity and then I grow again and then I, they, but that has allowed me to expand my business and expand my life a lot more. Tell me how you came to name this uh, coaching company, Laminin Coach. So there's, depending on who you are, there's two reasons I named it Laminin. So the first one is um, faith is a big part of my life. Um, and so there was a, a talk given by Louis Giglio about this um this uh, protein in your body called laminin. It's a connector protein. Um, and it really doesn't do a whole lot. It facilitates a lot. So, you know, it tells muscles, it connects and, and passes information between. And, and so without it, it's what holds you together, but it doesn't, but it's just a connector. And that's, you know, to me, that's what coaching is, um, is, is the idea that, you know, you, you go in and, and we produce a place where we say, hey, we know what's going on. We've been here. We can connect these disparate pieces together and have them talk to one another. And then the result is a body that's working as a whole uh, and, and more efficient because of it. And so faith-based, you know, that's, that's for my faith. That's for me. You know, business and, and biological-based, it's about making sure that your functioning parts are connected. Great. So if I hear, uh, I'm hearing you talk about the benefits of Laminin Coach, and I'm a potential client, and I contact you, what what goes on from there? So a lot of guys say, well, how do I know if I'm ready for you? You you don't have to be ready. And that's what we try to do that's totally different. You know, so it's it's a matter of, okay, um, I'm at capacity, or I have employees that are over capacity. You know, like that's happening a lot right now. Guys are calling us, or women are calling us and saying, hey, my project manager can't do any more projects and it's overworked. And in addition, I need more of them and I can't find them. I'm like, okay, so how can we get, you know, twice as many projects handled by your project manager, um, but not hire another project manager? So what we do is we we bring on, you know, we do a lot of, um, you know, providing remote project administrators and coordinators and stuff like that. So we supplement and make that project manager's life more manageable and uh and more enjoyable and then we take away like typically what we do is we take and we make a just an exhaustive list of everything they do in a day like is it at a granular granular level and then we look at that list and we say okay what on that list do you personally have to do um and and we're pretty pointed about it you know it's like okay go in the bathroom okay you're gonna have to do that on your own um you know but Replying to emails, you know, and, 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 you know, gathering information, research, uh, you know, getting things ready for review. Okay, we can get somebody else to do that. In this day and age, that's what we really have to do is we have to get the maximum dollar value um, out of the lowest dollar value we can get. So we need a $20 an hour employee to do $20 an hour work. Uh, we can't have a $40 an hour employee doing $30 an hour work. You know, we, we got to maximize that, 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 that portion of it. But in the end, you make the project manager's life better. And the person that's doing the other portion of the work, they have a job and they love it and they're good at it and they're better at it than you are. And this is a process that you've applied to yourself. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, 
you know, we, you know, if you were to email me and contact me, your my email is read by by my assistant, you know, and then half of my email is replied to by my assistant, uh, in, you know, in my own voice. And um, and what you get back is my best answer on my best day. It's like looking at my Facebook feed, you know, nobody lives as good as their Facebook feed, but it looks great. But those are your highlights. And so, you know, we have templates and scripts and stuff like that. And, um, I have a project manager here, and then we have remote project assistants that support that project manager. Um, same kind of thing. We get a lot more productivity, um, especially on a per dollar basis, um, because of this division of labor. What's, uh, as you were kind of uh, going through this process on your own, what were you most hesitant to change or give up? Like, uh, well, you know, I understand why I might need to not do that, but, you know, I just have to. I think you have to. One of the things I see owners have the hardest time giving up. And, and I was like that too, because certainly I failed just getting an assistant. I failed at it three times before it worked. And the first three times I thought maybe I didn't have the right assistant. In truth, they probably all would have worked fine. But I had to get over the idea that, that somebody is not going to, okay, you're not going to be as good at my game as I am. Uh, or, or as I can be, you are probably never going to be as good as I think I am. You will probably very quickly be better than I actually am at much of what I do because I only put 70% of my focus on it because that's all I have time to give. And you at 90% is better than me at 70. You know, would you be better than me at my hundred? No, not in, not in what I'm good at. But, you know, when we're talking about bookkeeping, I'm terrible at that, you know, documentation, I'm awful at it, you know. And then so we see a lot of guys that come to us and, 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 and executives come in there like, oh, wait, I need to be a lot better at documentation. You don't because you're really good at whatever it is you do. So stop focusing on what you're bad at. Let's get somebody else to do that. And then let's focus on getting you to spend more time where you're good because that's how you make your money. So. Being okay with who you are and um, and then putting people around you to do the other parts. Would the hesitancy, the hesitance to do that be a control issue or a financial issue or a combination? I don't know. I don't like it when I hear people say owners don't like to give up control. That may be accurate. Maybe it's because I'm an owner and I don't like the sound of it. But for me, it was about... Um, I'm still responsible. And so if I give it to somebody else, you know, and they don't do a good job, you know, and, and what I ended up finding out was one of the things we use assistance for that I never thought was going to be a big deal, but it's huge is we, I have, I assign projects and tasks and, and, and things to, to people all the time. And I finally became good at being able to delegate that took a while, but then I wouldn't follow up and have accountability of whether they did it and completed somebody because personally I would forget what I had assigned to people. So my assistant follows up on all the things on my behalf and that freed up so much of my mind. It's, it's like when you hear people say you can't sleep at night. So you go and you write down the things you're thinking about and then you can sleep because mm -hmm. your mind knows you wrote it down so you can let it go. That's what the assistant did to me on a massive scale. That release was tremendous. Just trying to remember not to forget burns so much energy that it is utterly destructive. Yeah, I would imagine. Hey, uh, sounds great. Is there anything else we should know um, about laminin and its benefits? No, just the, the main thing is we're different from, you know, we're not a consultant. We're not a, we're not a contractor. You know, it's, 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 it's a company and I've been where you are. I've done what you're, you know, in, in many ways, what you're, what you're in the middle of. And we come in and we say, Hey, we have this, here's what we should do. And we're going to do it for you. You know, we're not, you, you know, when we meet with a coaching client, you shouldn't leave the meeting with to do's for you. We leave with things to do. We leave with things for other people to do, but we don't, you know, how bad is it if a busy person calls you and says, hey, man, I like to meet, and then you give them a bunch of to-dos and tell them a bunch of ideas. Like, I, that just made my day work. That's not what we do. Great, great. Hey, uh, Chad, thanks so much. It's been great to talk to you today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it, Chad. Great name, and I uh, appreciate you asking. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>
So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to Get the Intel. We'll see you next time, and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.